Welcome to Mission Evolution Radio Show with Gwilda Wiecka, bringing together today's leading experts to uncover ever-deepening spiritual truths and the latest scientific developments in support of the evolution of humankind. For more information on Mission Evolution Radio with Gwilda Wiecka, visit www.missionevolution.org. And now, here's the host of Mission Evolution, Miss Gwilda Wiecka. Hello, dear friends, and welcome to Mission Evolution Radio Show, where we share innovative thoughts and explore deepening truth in support of the path to unity and enlightenment. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be looking at evolving into the divine self. In our modern-day mind-centered society, we've come to be identified with what we think, how much we know, and how many letters we have behind our name. Yet, those are things we accumulate with the mind after we incarnate while the heart and spirit languish. We may be rich in knowledge, but knowledge is a closed system. It's passed down from authority to authority and dictated by dogmatic common denominator belief systems, leaving us virtually lacking wisdom, compassion, and inspiration. In order to recognize the limitation of knowledge-based living, one only needs to look around at the condition of our world. If we're to evolve beyond this sad state of affairs before we destroy the planet and everything on her, we need to dust off our other skills, the ones we came with and promptly forgot, our divine self, full of love, compassion, inspiration, and capable of enlightenment. How do we access the true essence of our being? Can we integrate heart-centered thinking into daily life? What wisdom is available when we embrace our spiritual side? Once we access our divinity, what are we truly capable of? With us this hour to delve into these poignant and vital questions is Marilyn DeCallo, author of Seeing with the Heart, a guided inspirational journal. Marilyn is a transpersonal therapist, an intuitive coach, and trained hypnotist, Reiki master, and emotional freedom technique practitioner. She writes, speaks, and counsels humanity on how to awaken to their unique spark of divinity and integrate spiritual consciousness into daily life experience. Her website, MarilynDeCallo.com. Marilyn, thanks so much for joining us on Mission Evolution. Hi, Gwilda. Thanks for having me. This is a great topic. I, I think it's going to be very enlightening, if you will. <laughs> Love so, that. What, what's a transpersonal therapist? Well, a transpersonal therapist is someone who has a client-centered approach to healing. Um, My model is really based on that ancient shamanic model where really the therapist travels into the world and travels at the same pace of the client, appreciating that someone, an individual, is more than just the mind and the body. That transpersonal itself means to go beyond or to transcend the personal or the persona, and therefore transpersonal therapies seek to really address the full and complex needs of the person, the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. And the reason that we do this is because when you explore the whole person, you really get a better sense of the whole story, what might be going on in the life of the person that might be a little bit deeper than the sort of superficial or surface issues. So you said travel into the world. What world? So the world of the, of the human being is, is, includes the psyche, includes the life, but it also includes the cosmos. It's, um, it's the development of the individual beyond the sort of conventional or personal or individual level and incorporates that divine level, that spiritual level, that connection with inner source, that true connection with the, the truth of who we, we are completely. So we, we travel into that realm um, beyond the consciousness of just the everyday reality and include that expanded consciousness as we work together. So what education is required to become a transpersonal therapist? Um, I actually have a degree in in, uh, transpersonal psychology, a master's degree, and the the study of transpersonal psychology really is that 
study of the wisdom and the theories that integrate the spiritual and transcendent aspects of the human experience. So people like Joseph Campbell, although he didn't call himself a, a transpersonal psychologist, certainly his area focused on that transcendent realm of his work. Um, Carl Jung, um, in his work, um, uh, Stanislav Grof and Maslow, these are some of the theorists who have really developed the field of transpersonal psychology by um, including behaviorism and cognitive psychology and humanistic psychology, along with all of those wonderful Eastern and Western disciplines of mysticism and mindfulness. So like you say, they're kind of oozing into the shamanic realm, aren't they? They are oozing into the shamanic realm, absolutely. Those sublime and expanded experiences of who we are and the altered state of consciousness um, where we are uh, describing our life beyond just this physical reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's an intuitive coach? Well, an intuitive coach is really someone who... Um, uses the clair senses, the clairvoyance, the clairsentient. Um, I am really a claircognizant coach in that I use my connection with my divine self and my inner um, wisdom to connect with that energy in my clients. And when we're connected at that level, and again, that's a transpersonal level, we really can communicate in a way that brings um, that divine wisdom into our exploration, into the work that we're doing together. So that sort of sacred space, if you will, um, that's a very transformative space that allows us to look beyond um, just the immediate issues um, and the relationships that we're having and to bring in that knowledge and wisdom that is um, given to us through that flow of source and through that flow of connection with divine self. It sounds pretty complicated. How can you be confident of your accuracy if you're advising others from your personal intuition? Mm. Well, we're all connected, you know. <laughs> There's an interconnectedness um, in the energy. Um, and there's also, uh, through transpersonal psychology, there is some... Uh, uh, understanding of how we connect with our um, authentic self through kind of the symbolic language of the soul, if you will. So um, making meaning of the symbols that might come up um, that are really beneath the ego uh, and in the unconscious. So if I use uh, transpersonal hypnotherapy, we're able to really kind of uh, connect and sort through those those um, symbols and our intuition is actually that connection with our truth, with that, that divine knowingness, with that feeling that we are on track or um, bringing forward the wisdom that our soul is showing us through the experience. So it's, it's, a, um, it's a knowingness in terms of the feeling. It's a deep feeling of, of clarity, of peace, of wisdom, of understanding that we come to where we can say, yes, this is truth for me. And it's truth for you, but then how about the other person? It just seems really complicated. Um, you know, it's, it's a complicated realm. There's a lot going on. And we right. haven't been dancing there for a long time. Um, how personally did you come to the point, does it take a lot of practice? Did you come to the point that you can be pretty confident that the information you're getting is for other rather than just for self? Well, um, it's interesting. There are commonalities in our, uh, the way that we, I want to say, live um, our lives as human beings. So we come to places where we might feel frustrated or dissatisfied in our lives. And usually that leads us to ask these sort of big important questions of, you know, what is my life's purpose and where do I find meaning in life? Because everything we might have done to that point might look to us like it doesn't make sense anymore. Say we've gone through a divorce or we've lost someone we love or, or we've lost a job, something like that. 
all of a sudden we're faced with a somewhat existential crisis. And that's a common human experience that has been carried forth from, you know, the beginning of, of man, um, no matter what culture or, or what time we're living in. And as a human being, when we connect at that heart level, we understand that we can relate to each other through relationship of um, these experiences. So there's a there's a, a knowing a wisdom that has has helped us to see that when we we ask those big questions what is what is life's purpose what is my meaning that really what we're going after is we want to experience the unconditional love the unconditional joy the unconditional peace of connection and alignment with who we truly are Finding that connection to our inner truth then allows that joy to flow through, and that comes through the transpersonal level. That comes through that, that consciousness or that higher consciousness. So I know that when I am feeling this joy, when I am feeling this peace, when I am feeling this sense of, of satisfaction and not trying to change the conditions of my life, but find this flow that I have come back into accordance with this sort of knowing, this connection of who well, I, I hate am. To, I hate to yeah. leave us on a cliff. We're going to have to pick up with this after a short pause. Sure. Mar- Mar- Marilyn and I will be back after this commercial break. You're listening to the Mission Evolution Radio Show, coming to you on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. We live in rapidly shifting times of extreme volatility and uncertainty. Such profound change brings a unique opportunity for the evolution of consciousness. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, host of Mission Evolution Radio Show, a program that explores the latest scientific developments and deepening spiritual truths supporting human evolution. Join me on xzbn.net, where I interview leading experts in science, physics, medicine, spirituality, and more. By applying divergent viewpoints to leading-edge topics, we uncover expansive and evolutionary truth to assist you on your path to enlightenment. More information and past episodes are available at missionevolution.org.
Welcome back. This is Mission Evolution Radio, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. Remember, past episodes are available on our website, missionevolution.org. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka, and our special guest this hour is Marilyn DiCallo. Her website, marilyndicallo.com. Marilyn, we were talking about how a person knows when they're in the flow and have accessed um, kind of a universal wisdom. How can you tell the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Mm. Well, knowledge, uh, in, in my view, is something that we gain through the decisions we, or choices we make to learn something new. We, um, we intentionally set out to uh, understand a, um, a way of doing something, how to use a tool, how to, how to relate to a, um, a certain philosophy, what, what the tenets are of a belief system. Knowledge is really the, um, the information that we gain, the data that we gain through our experience in life. Wisdom, at least inner wisdom, I think is what goes beyond sort of that, that human endeavor of, of gaining knowledge or seeking knowledge. Maybe with knowledge we learn to become a lawyer or we learn to become a, a welder. We, we understand how to use our human skills and abilities and apply that in a way that, that um, brings us some satisfaction or understanding. Wisdom is really, um, for me, that sense of knowing yourself, of, you know, maybe you've gone through um, – a journey in your life and it's been one of um, challenge uh, or even darkness um, but you understand or you come to understand that there is a potential gift that that you have grown in your own awareness of who you are and um, that sort of self-discovery part of your life journey And the key to that is that you find your way back into your life, into living every day with with this new um, tool or this new understanding that then you can apply this new openness, this new awareness, this um, this new growth, if you will, personal growth. So inner wisdom, is that the same as outer wisdom, like um, we talk about the Akashic Records or the the information uh, inherent in nature where everything works together in perfect synchronicity? Are they all related? Mm, They are all related. Um, You know, we do tend to separate um, different uh, aspects of our life, but, you know, there is a very... um, a divine way, if you will, of looking at ourselves, at the world, um, at what gives you meaning in life through the eyes of source, through the eyes of the divine self. And um, it, it actually shifts the relationship that you have with your reality. Now, it is a, a consciousness shift, I want to say, that um, it's really sort of bringing up the, you know, in a, in a way, um, if you integrate that inner and outer wisdom, you're, you are unlocking meaning and messages in ways that perhaps um, has only been contained in your unconscious mind. But if you can bring that to the surface and then actually start to look at your life through those eyes, you start to see more joy in everything that you're doing, you actually start to expect and anticipate and be eager for all of the sort of um, majesty or sacred beauty of life. It's a, it's a way of taking that inner and outer wisdom and appreciating who we are and then letting that flow through our lives. So that kind of takes us back to one of the original questions I asked when we were opening once we access this, what are we truly capable of as human beings? Mm. Well, um, so let me just say that, you know, conceptually what we're, I think we're talking about is a sort of sacred unit, unity between your humanness and your divine self. It's, um, you know, in experiencing this connection, you come into this feeling and a knowing of this frequency of love, of unconditional love. 
So connecting with the divine self is really a process of transformation. It's, it's taking that seed of consciousness that's already in there, that's really been there forever, and just really allowing it to grow stronger. And once you've done this, you're, you're looking at your life, you're looking at the world, you're looking at the earth um, in this light of, of really of sacred beauty. And it allows you to um, see beyond just the conditions you're experiencing to to this sort of manifestation of, of unconditional love. Life becomes more of this joyous path of well-being. We always have our challenges, but when we do have our challenges, if we're connected with our divine self, these challenges appear, as I mentioned earlier, sort of growth opportunities, opportunities to shift into this sort of higher frequency once again, to, to use that divine inner wisdom and that connection to allow more beauty to unfold, to allow more joy. And, and yes, we as human beings, we, we experience a range of emotions. We hurt. We have pain. There's suffering for sure. But we don't feel like we have to constantly change the world around in order to come back to that place of knowing who we are and mm-hmm. of feeling mm-hmm. that appreciation. We know it's becoming clear we're currently living in unprecedented times of change. What do you see as causing this upheaval at this particular time? Well, (laughs) um, I think that I look at this challenge uh, and this upheaval um, as part of humanity's expanding consciousness. I really think that, um, you know, we are of the earth that you know we we are part of this um, evolution of uh, of the earth and of the human consciousness we're we're really um, moving into a, a vibrational shift in our world um, we are um, experiencing um, what we need to become and we're becoming, if you will, um, a new way of surviving or living or, or engaging um, in the physical uh, as well as in human consciousness. So through this sort of awakening, if you will, of our uh, awareness and conscious connection with our divine self, we're also embodying this sort of higher energetic vibratory rate of the, of the earth, of the planet. Um, and I think that sometimes that can, you know, we, there's been lots of talk about the quantum field and, you know, um, and that the quantum field itself is accelerating really the greater good of the planet and of all life forms. But in that process, you know, we have to shift from that old paradigm of thinking into a new paradigm of, of thinking and a way of life. And, and so maybe there's a little bit of, you know, um, tumultual kind of feeling in that shift, but that's, that's kind of the way the human evolves as well. We kind of look at those issues that are challenging us and, and that we, that may be uncomfortable and know that they are propelling us in a way to find the greater goodness, to find our well being, to find that next level of joy. So I kind of see it as a uh, part of our responsibility right now to find that harmony and peace and love in our lives as individuals so that we can assist in kind of, dissolving the divide between the human mind and the cosmic consciousness of love that this planet is embodying. That's beautiful. Beautifully put. Dissolve that (laughs) um, imaginary rift, really, because it's just a matter of where we're focused. Yes. Exactly. Thank you for saying that word, focus. That's exactly, you know, you know, our perceptions are where we focus. And so if we have a perception of who we are and, and we understand the choices we are making, we know how we want to live in the world and we can bring that about. What do you think is a critical aspect of our evolution during this time of change? So um, really awakening to this relationship with our divinity um, and creating our reality from divine consciousness rather than from perhaps a lower consciousness of, of 
competition and achievement. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't be driven to do those things that we are passionate about and, and those things take place in the world. But what I'm saying is that we will gain more satisfaction when we're connected to our whole self, when we have thoughts that are sweet and good about each other, about our planet, and our timing is good. Um, and we can, we, you know, many, many people are living in this expanded consciousness. Um, and, and it is an appreciation for all that is. The, not only, you know, the buildings we've built and the, you know, the societies we've created, but, you know, our own individual capacity to love and to create and to be the creation, to enjoy that aspect of living um, in, as humanities you know, as humanity. Um, so when we have these challenges, um, we meet them through connection with the sort of broader inner knowing of our truth and our power, not according to opinions, but we become others' opinions. We become more reliant upon and responsible for our own path of love and expansion. That and I think is critical. Yeah. It, it seems like such a critical point, and we're just about to take another break here. But on the other side, I want to get into how does one do that? How does one step out of fear and into love? But it is time for another short pause. Marilyn and I will return to our discussion on the other side of this break. So you stay right there. This is Mission Evolution Radio Show on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xedbn.net. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, 
It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome back. This is Mission Evolution Radio Show, www.missionevolution.org, bringing the latest tools and information to support the path to enlightenment. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka, and our guest this hour is Marilyn DiCallo. Her website, MarilynDiCallo.com. Marilyn, we were just talking about how this transformation from I to we, if you will, from responding to fear and and living in a fear-based way versus accessing universal love and coming from there and all we do, and the effect it has on timing. Would you go into that a little bit for us? Yeah, so through that connection to the divine intelligence, the within us, which is really seated in every human being on the planet, um, we are connected to one another. And um, in that connection and in that power of the divine intelligence and the divine within us is perfect timing. So when we, when we create, when we want to bring something about and we we imagine or we, um, we desire and that comes from the heart, that comes from that place of really that feeling of joy, we set in motion this, this energy, if you will. Everything is energy. And so this vibration of energy in, um, in our thoughts and in our feelings connects with that divine intelligence, with that quantum field, as the scientists call it. And through that um, connection, divine timing is established and, and perfect timing for bringing about whatever it is that we desire happens through, through this flow, this unseen sort of sacred energy between one another. So when we're in sync, when we're in accord, when we have this feeling of alignment with our inner self and our true authentic um, desires, we can relax and let go and know that that will be what will manifest for us in this reality. You know, it's it's an interesting thing. As, as you're talking here, my mind's going down 16 different rabbit holes. But it seems like when we're afraid, we're closed down. And so right. we're kind of isolated within our identity. When we're not afraid, when we're connected with love, we open, and therefore that energy that we put out, the desire, the intent, c- can move out into the world, into the future, and pull together the constituent parts for what we're trying to create. Is this what you're talking about? I am. I am talking exactly about that. I want to clarify one thing, that even when we're in a negative or I want to say less positive state, because everything that we do is is always evolving towards the good, uh, I believe that, um, that, and we're feeling that angst or we're feeling the struggle or, or the suffering, um, we, are actually, we are actually creating that energy as well. So because we create with our thoughts, with our feelings, with our, 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 our um, I'm going to say, state of consciousness, um, we, can, we can continue to uh, attract and um, give out, uh, receive and give that energy and, and, and remain stuck. And I think that's one of the, the big issues that we face. And, and the answer isn't to fight that. It isn't to, to try to, you know, get in there and, and dig it out. In the, in the transpersonal approach, it really is to try to shift that energy because when you shift into a state of consciousness that is more loving, and that's why connection with the divine self through meditation and through other practices will actually give you that open channel, you, you drop away or you dissolve that negative energy that might be feeding your concerns or your worries or your, or your angst. So, Rats, you're telling me the buck stops here, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, the buck does stop here. That's the good news and the bad news, right? Well, you know, when we're in fear, when we're going, oh, what's going to happen to me um, and trying to – there's two kinds of prayer. One is petitioning the Lord and the other one is, is hooking into the divine. When yeah. we're in that petitioning kind of place, that's what we're putting out is lack, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and it, I want to just be clear that we, we, we grow up with these sort of flawed premises about our own, you know, power, our own worth, our own, you know, abilities, um, because that's sort of part of this old paradigm that we were talking about. And the new paradigm um, is really about um, abundance. It's about prosperity. It's about knowing that we are all really moving towards this expanded consciousness of well-being. And that is our birthright. That is the truth of who we are. Now, there have been religions and there have been societies and there have been patriarchy um, in many ways that we've bought into and even family dynamics. And we're not... We're not blaming ourselves. We're not condemning ourselves. We're not justifying or judging anything here. What we're, what we're doing is we're really allowing ourselves to expand our consciousness in ways that it's time to do. So, um, yes, while we may believe in lack, all we need to know is that that's a flawed premise. And there are tools and there are ways for us to shift into that energy and to know ourselves as, in truth as that expanded being we truly are. So the the conditioning that you're speaking of that we've you know grown up with for generations probably stuck in our DNA to a certain extent yeah, yeah. have have also burned these neurological ruts or pathways how can we jump out of those ruts and start rewriting our neurology yeah so again it's practice um, in the beginning uh, meditation actually really helps with uh, shifting out of that. Um, out of that focus. So uh, I, I really truly believe that in meditation, when we can quiet the mind, when we can release the patterns of thinking, the, the um, sort of those inner thoughts that keep us in fear or lack or worry, um, we start to notice that there's an opening. And there's an opening to this space. And this is that space, that sacred space where we can start to allow new thinking, new energy, inspiration to come through. And so we, and that will shift those neurological pathways. Um, there are other practices that we can do. Ritual is certainly one of them. We find a place in our home where we can sit down and just have some, um, listen to some music, some very uplifting music, and focus on that. Light a candle, read uh, something uplifting. Many people use prayers or invocations. Um, certainly, uh, shamanic journeying is a way to shift out of that um, paradigm. But it is a it is a practice. I want to say it's it, many people call them contemplative practices, but. You know, mindfulness, being aware of our thinking, being aware of when we, of what might trigger our emotions, coming into this sort of appreciation for the guidance that we have within us already to notice and to observe and to appreciate that we have all we need to really go beyond these old pattern thinkings and these neurological pathways. It's like children and, you know, when they grow and, and they learn their, their neurological pathways shift and, and, and are, you can lay down new tracks. Like, so it is really this conscious practice and then actually, um, not beating yourself up if you're not getting to where you want to go instantly. Um, it seems patience. like the yeah. It, se it seems like the um, increased frequency on the planet is putting a lot of pressure on the old neurological pathways because they can't uh, um, run that frequency. Right, right. So I would agree that um, the stress. The anxiety, um, I want to say some of the um, worry and maybe things that happen to folks with the natural disasters and the, you know, all of these things that we might characterize as upheavals, um, both personally and in 
the world are um, are part of the awakening. And it is, isn't it? Because it's like in all traditions, it's a shattering required uh, for the shaman to gain his power or for the initiate to come into his own. Isn't that what we're looking at on a global scale? I, I, I believe that we are. It's time to confront those old beliefs and limitations. This is the time. And those things that have held us back on both the collective and the individual level. So if you are experiencing turbulent times, you just know that it's a sign to leave behind the ideas and the perspectives that no longer serve your path. And you can apply these principles of divine love to yourself, and and you should really do so that first. Like, that needs to sort of be the first responder, you know, um, plan here. Um, Understand that you're worthy of joy, and you're worthy of freedom, and you can change the way. Um, You see your life experience. Clinging to old patterns, I think, is what really sort, sort of prolongs that suffering. So if our society, you know, clings, starts to cling to the old, I want to say, patriarchy principles, you know, it's going to create more turmoil. Um, we really do have a responsibility right now to, to shift and personally to help with integrating these divine aspects of who we're becoming into our society. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot, re- lot depends on it, doesn't it? It sure does. I mean, you know, values of compassion it aren't the situations now calling for that. So calling Absolutely. for compassion. Absolutely. And yeah. we're going to have to pick up with compassion, which is an important subject, on the other side of yet another commercial break. Marilyn and I will be back shortly, so don't you guys dare go away. You're listening to the Mission Evolution Radio Show on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. The concept of a new age has been around since the late 19th century, yet much of its original meaning has been lost. What exactly is the new age? Is it a religion, a collection of obscure esoteric practices, a series of doomsday predictions, or an astrological event? 
The New Age Chronicles is a unique, complimentary publication bringing reason and grounded information to separate fact from fiction. Chocked full of valuable information to support you as we make the monumental shift into the new era. You won't want to miss a single innovative issue. The New Age Chronicles newspaper is coming soon to www.newagechronicles.com. Welcome back. This is Mission Evolution Radio Show, www.missionevolution.org, bringing the latest developments in an evolving world. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. I always love suggestions from my listeners. Email me at info at missionevolution.org and propose a topic or guest that's on your mind. I'm sure we'll all enjoy them. Our guest this hour is Marilyn DiCallo. Her website, marilyndicallo.com. Marilyn, we were getting into... Um, I want to. We've been talking about the divine self, the divine self. Would you mind defining that for us? Yeah. Well, I'll start with what it doesn't mean. So, integrating the divine self does not mean that you are without fear or discord or or suffering, but it does mean that you have balanced that negativity, if you will, and neutralized it with shifting into sort of the opposite effects, which would be unconditional love. And unconditional love is more about this connection where you give your attention to your joy, to what makes you happy to helping and serving and healing, to being that loving presence, that peaceful and compassionate and connected, wise presence with yourself and with others. So ultimately, we need a balance between heart intelligence and that of the mind to get a more accurate understanding of truth. How do you balance the two? Yeah, so balance is key. Um, again, uh, there there are certain things that you, that you can do, and the first thing is really to stop listening to the dictates and the opinions of others about what your happiness is. <laughs> you know, get in touch with what brings you joy. And sometimes we don't feel worthy of that. Sometimes we've had experiences in our lives where, you know, um, others have told us that we need to please them by, by acting or being a certain way. That could be parents or bosses or, you know, even, even spouses in relationships. Um, so I think it's really important to get in touch with your own heart um, in a way that is compassionate, appreciative, and open to hearing um, what makes you happy. We all deserve that well-being and that love and that feeling of goodness. Um, sometimes we can get it by looking at a beautiful tree, or sometimes we can get it sitting in nature next to a, a stream, feeling that kind of calm, cool um, water rushing. Um, there are so many ways that we can get that sense of, of love and appreciation for life, but it comes from within us. If that's what we're seeing and feeling in the world, that's actually coming from our own connection with our own true self. So start to get in places that make you feel good, do things that make you happy, don't take um, life as seriously sometimes, laugh, find humor. That's how we kind of balance the, maybe the, um, our old way of constantly looking at things that could come up. And uh, I guess it's related to our primeval Neanderthal or whatever it is, you know, um, 
uh, past, but, you know, always looking for what the next problem might be. Start looking mm-hmm. for what the next joy might be. You know, start <laughs> you know- looking... Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you brought up you brought up something that I would like to go back to because I think it's extremely important. Is sure. how we're told what we want. And in our consumer society a lot of that goes on. And then yeah. also in our more dogmatic religious society a lot of that went on, the guilt and the shame and then this is what you have to do. So the masses are controlled by avoidance rather than by following your joy. Would you mm. speak to the difference between the two? Mm. Well, yeah. Um See, once you're aware of your connection to your divine self, to your divinity, to your majesty, to your incredible power, you have the ability to shift into better feeling thoughts about any situation. And you can slow down that negative momentum and, and choose a new perspective. So, so that's the power of you know, of really getting clear about that, you know, that alignment with your true self. When, when you're thinking, so let's say you're thinking about moving to a, a new city and um, someone says to you, well, you're never going to make enough money in that city because it's a little city and they have no industry and there's nothing to do there. And, you know, you better, you better not move there. And so the wheels start turning and you're like, oh dear, you know, money, survival, lack, shortage, you know, fear, worry. Uh Uh-oh, I better not do this. You haven't listened at all to, um, to your, your initial, what, what brought that initial desire to move to that city? That's gone now. You're in that mode of, okay, um, I may not be able to do this. This may not work for me. This is not probably a smart thing to do. You've defeated. And you know, Marilyn, you, yeah, you, what I've, you know what I've noticed when, when that happens is yeah. that all the opportunities disappear. They could be right that's under your right, nose and they it. disappear. That's yeah. so true because, Gwilda, you have actually erased them from the, from the current energetic, you know, creation. The, uh, you're, uh, but the good thing to know is that really what you've done is you've hidden your desire going back to that connection becoming aware again of your truth and your joy enlivens your power within you and then you start to create the joy that will follow you that will precede you that will be with you that will create what it is that you want so it really begins again with listening to yourself balancing that heart space of feeling your own appreciation for what it is that you want. And, um, yeah, it's a practice. It's a practice. So isn't our true desire, not the ones we've been conditioned into, but our true desire, isn't that really divine guidance? Yes, it absolutely is divine guidance. And that divine guidance can, can be, uh, expanded to everything that you want do, um, everything you create in your life. And that, that is exactly how we create, to be honest. I mean, we create through this connection, this powerful partnership, this blending of our human self with our divine self. And when we bring that through, that is the pure joy. That is the positivity. Um, and that allows us to find the satisfaction and the fulfillment, the meaning and the purpose. Um, that's going to bring us the most reward um, in this experience on earth. Mm. And if we're all doing that on this planet, oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) How how do you see us evolving as a race once we embrace the consciousness of love? Yeah. um, Well, first of all, I think that, uh, you know, looking at the world through the eyes of spirit, um, this is an incredibly beautiful, leading edge, um, creative place to be. And I think that we, you know, could, could actually evolve as, um, I want to say with all of our skills, with all of our talents, we could, I mean, technology continues to evolve in a way, but, but it, 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 might actually have a little bit more of that humanistic and that that spiritual component to it businesses 
will 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 include the intuitive and that spark of divine and we will we will recognize that we are spiritual beings as well as human beings first when we create there may be um exchange of abundance in ways that you know we haven't thought of we may um you know we're not limited i guess is my is my um the biggest thing that i would see that nothing limits us that you know we understand that as a creator we can we can create through love rather than through fear we that's can beautiful because joy. we were we were just talking about how solutions disappear uh when we're right. in the face of fear well we've got yeah. some problems out there that are causing a lot of fear and yet fear keeps us from seeing the solutions exactly exactly and if we're creating through joy and we're creating through love, you know, imagine the um, opportunities to really connect with each other in a way that is so satisfying and so fulfilling and so giving. And I mean, I just have this, this sense of, you know, like um, uh, power and, um, and love. Uh, mm-hmm. That would that would be very uplifting to the planet, to ourselves, <laughs> and, to each other. Um, you know, Marilyn, yeah. it, it's hard to believe, but we're out of time. Oh. I, I just thanks so much for coming on the show, and I'm so glad to be on this journey with you. Thank you so much, Gwilda. I really appreciate all your love, compassion, and joy that you are sharing with the Thank world. Thank you. Our guest this hour has been Marilyn DiCallo, author of Seeing with the Heart, Guided Inspirational Journal. Marilyn is a transpersonal trans- therapist and intuitive coach. Her website, MarilynDeCallo.com. Remember to join our email family to stay abreast of all the exciting new things we have coming up at MissionEvolution.org. This has been Mission Evolution Radio Show with Gwilda Wiyaka on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Join us next time as the mission continues to bring information, resources, and support to an evolving world. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. 
He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.